Hip hip hooray and zippity doo da. It's time for our monthly visit to our favorite website, Everyday Feminism. A monthly visit that feels exactly like visiting a woman who has PMS if the woman happens to be incredibly stupid and complains all the time about stuff that doesn't matter. This month on Everyday Feminism, we find a moving personal tale by one Kendra Lee entitled, My Partner Came Out as a Man and I Struggled with Losing My Lesbian Identity. In other words, this is a story about a lesbian who thought she was in a relationship with a woman until the woman decided she identified as a man, which meant the lesbian was no longer a lesbian, but just a normal heterosexual living with a confused person. Now, some of you might laugh when you hear a story like this and slap your knee repeatedly while you choke on your own hilarity and roll helplessly across the floor, occasionally pounding the carpet with your fist as tears of mirth stream down your cheeks. But that would be wrong. What sort of cruel, heartless human being would turn a serious story like this into a joke? We're about to find out. Kendra Lee writes that she bumped into her girlfriend slash now boyfriend Amy, quote, in a lesbian bar surrounded by women doing jello shots late on a Sunday afternoon, unquote. This is a very strange coincidence because it happens I had a dream about a lesbian bar where the lesbians were doing jello shots on a Sunday afternoon, though in my dream all the lesbians were naked and secretly hoping a straight man would walk in. So I'm guessing it was probably a different lesbian bar. Anyway, Kendra and Amy fell in love, moved in together, held a marriage ceremony, and had a child. But then the shocker came when Amy announced she identified as a man named Simon. So actually, this is a little bit more like my dream, after all. Kendra now found herself in the painful position of having to decide whether she was a lesbian who lived with a woman, or a straight woman who lived with a man, or a lesbian who lived with a woman who thought she was a man, or possibly a woman visiting a man who kept the stiff body of a woman in the cellar of his roadside motel so that the woman needed to get out of there fast before something absolutely terrible happened. I'm sure you'll be glad to know that Kendra and Simon, formerly Amy, decided to stay together. And now, Kendra identifies as a lesbian who went to bed with a woman but woke up with a man but is still a lesbian because otherwise she'd be a straight woman and would want to live with an actual man. And then what would she do with the stuffed body in the cellar? All of which only goes to show that sometimes, even in the whiny, dissatisfied world of everyday feminism, stories have a happy ending though not as happy as my dream about the lesbian bar. Trigger warning, I'm Andrew Clavin, and this is The Andrew Clavin Show. I feel hunky-dunky, life is tickety-boo. Birds are winging, also singing, hunky dunky Ship-shaped, tipsy-topsy, the world is zippity-zing. It's a wonderful day, hooray, hooray, it makes me want to sing. Oh, hurrah, hooray. All right, we are back from Texas, and you know, it's kind of a bring down because we were just in Glenn. Glenn Beck was so nice to let us use his studios at the Blaze and incredible facility that Glenn has in Dallas. And always, you know, Glenn has got some of the happiest people working for him, and some of them have been working for him forever. He's one of those guys that when you work for him, you love it and you don't want to leave, and so people just work for him forever. He's got these beautiful facilities. Come back. Our studios, which are under construction, are not quite finished, so we've got it. They've got us in this back room. Uh, you can see. We had Cynthia put up the wonderful Andrew Clavin Show logo behind me. I've got this little guy on my shoulder, like he looks like he's about to bite my head. A little uh, draw, chalk me uh, sitting there about to bite my head. I feel like Donald Duck. Remember Donald Duck would have the uh, the angel and the devil Donald on his shoulder. I feel, I feel like I've got him whispering in my ear. It's a little bit strange. Anyway, it was a great, great trip. It was terrific. We're traveling with the whole you know upper management of the Daily Wire and Ben and uh, Jeremy Boring, the God King of the Daily Wire. And as I say, we don't call him that because he has any relation to God. We simply call him the God King of the Daily Wire because he sent out a memo saying, you know, you now have to call me the God King of the Daily Wire. I don't know what that's about. Maybe he's get, <laughs> getting out of hand. But anyway, it was great. And, and this place, in all seriousness, this place, the Daily Wire, I have had 
I have had the weirdest work history of great places to work. Not only great places to work, but places where the people I worked with were immense talents, who all of whom went on to better things. I worked in a small town newspaper where all the reporters went on to be big time reporters, one of them, one of the top reporters at the New York Times, which at that time was a newspaper. And, you know, I worked at, uh, where else? I worked at WR Radio, which was one of the most uh, uh, prestigious news organizations in New York at the time. All those people went into network television and everything, all the people, and they were great people. I mean, it was not just that they were talented. Then I was at PJTV when Steve Crowley and Bill Whittle and Zoe Rachel were there, just enormous talents, all of whom have gone on to have their own careers and everything. And now to be here, you know, with Ben Shapiro and even, even I'll give a little credit to Michael Knowles, talented, talented people, but all really nice people, including everybody else, maybe Austin, that guy's running the show now, he's, he's a little bit dice. No, no, they're all like incredibly nice people and it really is uh, a gift. And I have to say, I think of all the places I've worked for, this is the place I really like the best and it's just a well-run, happy shop and, uh, and that's because of the people who are here, except obviously for me, a bitter, angry, uh, you know, nasty, acidic person. But, but, I'm a little happier than I would be if I had to wait online at the post office. And that's because I don't have to do that because of stamps.com. I do. I hate waiting online. I also hate waiting in line. I hate wearing in line skates. I hate being online, in line, or wearing in lines online. I hate the whole thing. Anytime I have to stop my day and get in my car and drive to the post office and stand online and just hope the place is open, all of that, pain in the neck, don't do it. Go to stamps.com. You get everything, everything that a post office could give you, except for the line, right on your computer. You can buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter, any package, any class of mail, using your own computer and printer. It is very cool. Put the envelope in your printer, comes out with a stamp on it. Stamps.com makes it so easy. They'll even send you a digital scale so you can automatically calculate the exact postage you will need, and Stamps.com will even help you decide the best class of mail based on your needs. There's no need to lease an expensive postage meter which are, those things are so heavy, and when they fall on your foot, it's a disaster. So you don't have to do that. Right now, you too can enjoy the Stamps.com service with a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus postage and a digital scale without long-term commitments. Go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Clavin, K-L-A, V as in Victor, A-N. Go to Stamps.com and enter Clavin, and you will never have to go to the post office again. One of the uh, true pleasures of this uh, of this trip was driving. We would we started out in a town called Slayton, then we drove from Slayton to Dallas, then we drove, I'm sorry, uh, Slayton to Cisco, where our founders and supporters are great people who are the backers of the Daily Wire and some of the uh, visionaries behind the Daily Wire, which was just terrific, really wonderful visit there. And then we get in the car and we drive to Dallas. So it's me, <laughs> it's me, Ben and Jeremy in the car with poor Jonathan Hay, who is like, I, I have to say, I, I felt bad for the guy because all we do is we argue about Donald Trump. It's just constant. All we do. And when I say argue, it's not it's not an angry argument. It's a, it's a friendly argument. And the, the weirdest thing, the weirdest thing about me, me and Shapiro arguing is that we almost always see exactly the same thing. We're almost always talking about the same facts. It's never like, you know, he'll say, well, this is happening, and I'll say, no, that's not happening. It really is almost all attitudinal. I think that uh, Ben, I think that Ben is more idealistic than I am, and he sees what could be, and he thinks like, ah, that's not good, you know, it's, we're, we're beneath where we should be, and I see what could be in the bad way, and I think, well, we're above that. And so uh, we're actually just arguing about our, our attitudes. But, but you know, it is, it is interesting. You know, ben does this thing about good Trump, bad Trump. And I was on a Dennis Prager show the other day, uh, sort of promoting my Prager U video about the media, what is fake news, which you can see on, on Prager U. And, uh, and, and Dennis was saying to me, Dennis is a, has been a big Trump supporter. He basically got online, and a lot of people have attacked Dennis saying, oh, you know, how can you be, you're the, the man about values, and you know, you're abandoning your, your values. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of this stuff going on on the right where people are arguing over Trump. 
And Dennis said, you know, every human being is a package, and you take the good with the bad. And some of the good stuff we're getting with Trump, and a lot of good stuff, you know, Gorsuch and the rollback of Obama's incredible uh, regulatory overreach, the stuff in, in the foreign policy stuff we're getting now, which has really been terrific, uh, the, the complete wiping out of ISIS, the annihilation, uh, to use, I think it was Mattis's word, of ISIS, all, you know, all this good stuff that's coming down the pike. The Congress has not stepped up yet and really given us some big legislation that we can bang our chest about, but a lot of good stuff. And then, you know, every now and again, Trump does something that is kind of, you know, makes you shocked. And the question that I wanted to ask is like, is this, is this necessary? Is there some way, is it really good Trump, bad Trump, or is it just all Trump? I mean, is the good stuff and the stuff that makes us uncomfortable, is it all just part of the same package and somehow necessary? So, so Trump is over. Yesterday he gave, I just thought, a terrific, terrific speech in uh, Warsaw and Poland, just reaffirming Western values. We're going to talk about it a little more today because some of the reaction from the left was in, insane. But I think that, you know, he's now he's meeting with Putin. So this is the big thing. He's in the G20 conference, which is 19 countries and the EU. That's why they call it the G20. And it's basically economic leaders of the world. The people are rioting. I have no idea why they're rioting. I don't know what they're protesting. They're basically, it's the left going out there and just starting fights with the police. And some of them, look, a lot of people there to, to march and all this stuff. And some people, it's always the small number of troublemakers who start the fights. And then it looks like a big riot on TV. And, you know, their, their protest is called Welcome to Hell. So, you know, they're, they're not there with a good, you know, with good purposes. But, you know, I don't even know what they're protesting. Are they protesting that we're too rich, too free, you know, that the, too peaceful? What is it? You know, like we want we want to destroy the G20 because it's made the world too wealthy. I mean, there's some kind of idea that if we're wealthy, somebody else must be suffering. And I just think that that is like absolute, uh, you know, absolute nonsense, obviously. But the big thing is that uh, Donald Trump is going to meet with Putin. He had a meeting. They had well, just take a little clip. It's not. It's not really anything. This is the stuff they do for the cameras before they go back behind the uh, the curtain and start actually doing the arm wrestling stuff. It's going very well. We've had some very very good talks. We're going to have a talk now, and obviously that will continue. But we look forward to a lot of very positive things happening for Russia, for the United States. And for everybody concerned, uh, it's an honor to be with you. Um, I'm delighted to be able to meet you personally, Mr. President, and I hope, as you have said, our meeting will yield positive results. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if you're if you're not watching it and you're just listening, to those are the cameras, million cameras going off. And of course, the press goes nuts every time they shake hands. What did that handshake mean? And was somebody snubbed? And you know, all this stuff is going on live and in person. So of course, none of it means anything. You shake hands with the guy you're there to meet, and so nobody say nobody can say anything. I, I get a little worried when Trump <laughs> Trump is meeting guys like Putin because Putin is a genuine murdering dirtbag. He's a bad bad fascist guy who has been running rampant uh, because. Nobody has had the guts to stop him. He's one of those guys. He's not. He's not a Hitler, but he like Hitler. He can feel the weaknesses of his, of his opponents. He knows how far they'll go. He looks at them and he can assess them and think, well, this guy is not going to fight back. And that's what he looked at Obama and thought, and think, I I can take the Ukraine. I can take Crimea. Maybe I can even move into back into Eastern Europe. You never know. And it's it's funny because, but but I do worry when Trump goes to meet him because Putin actually murders journalists, you know. And I I, I don't want Trump to suddenly get any idea. Is. I know he's not got any friends to journalists, but I want to make sure we're all talking about the same rules. We don't want people sticking plutonium into Chris Cuomo and not, no other poisons either. I want to make sure we're getting this very straight, you know, this good old fashioned American bashing the press. The press deserves it. They have been com they've become intellectually corrupt, incredibly biased, but no injecting plutonium into Chris Cuomo. I think we have to no throwing reporters out of windows. I sometimes feel I should send a little card to our friend John Nolte, you know, who's a real crusader against the press. I just feel like he should put, have a little card, no throwing Chris Quind Cuomo out the window, no defenestrating Chris Cuomo. So I want to make sure we're all playing by the same rules. It's one thing, good American stuff, criticizing, no killing reporters. We don't want that going on. So I don't want, I don't want Trump listening to Putin going, so huh, plutonium, and you inject that, I get that. No, we don't want that. But, but, what 
What we do want is we do want Putin to look at this guy and think, I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know who he is. He's he's a wild man. I'm not going to make any moves. We want him. We want Putin nervous. And of course, the press. Well, you know, Rex Tillerson, the secretary of state, he's on the plane. He gave a very sane interview just saying, well, you know, we're trying to improve relations. This is diplomacy. Here's Tillerson. I think the, the important uh, aspect of this is that uh, this is where we've begun uh, an effort to begin to rebuild confidence between ourselves and Russia uh, at the military to military level, but also at the diplomatic level. So I think uh, it is an effort that serves both of our interests as well as the broader interest of the international community. Uh, we hope that this is going to be the beginning of other important areas that need to be addressed in order to strengthen our relationship. But we're at the very beginning, and I would say at this point, uh, it's difficult to say exactly what the Russia's, what Russia's intentions are in this relationship. And I think that's the most important part of this meeting, is to have a good exchange between President Trump and President Putin over what they both see as the nature of this relationship between our two countries. So, of course, the press, I, we're going to talk about the press reaction to this and the left's reaction to this, which is hilarious. But first, we should talk about naturebox.com, because if you are like me, I, listen, I, I, I eat very well. I take care of myself. I try to take care of myself. But when it gets late at night, you know, I don't sleep much and I'm still awake when everybody else has gone to bed. And that's the time. That is the time when I might like pour myself a drink and just reach into the cabinet and get whatever is there. And usually it ain't good. Right. That's the stuff that you start grabbing, you know, just anything that you want to eat, just something you want to snack on. But with Nature Boxy, they have very tasty, incredibly tasty. The, um, snacks that are tailored for health and tailored for calories. You know how many, many calories are in each one. And I think that that, you know, that is going to be make a big difference when you're up late at night. Let me see if I have a list of some of the stuff that they can give you. It's, it's, it's just really different. And if you go on their website, you can see the pictures of it. It's just like just that alone will sell you, uh, will sell the product to you. I don't have to sell it to you. Let me just read some of this. Vanilla bean wafers, whole wheat chocolate cookie bites, blueberry nom noms. Here's the one that'll kill you. Cream brulee peanuts. Cream brulee peanuts. I mean, you know, that sounds awfully, awfully good. And it is awfully good, but they're kind of put in little portions so you know how many calories you're getting. And it's just healthier. They taste great and they're better for you, created with high quality ingredients that are free from artificial colors, flavors, or sweeteners so you can feel great about snacking. Nature Box recently made their service even better, so now you can order as much as you want, as often as you want, with no minimum purchase required, and you can cancel anytime. It's simple. Go to naturebox.com and check out their snack catalog. I'm telling you, once you see the pictures, it will sell. They will sell themselves. There are over 100 snacks to choose from, and they're constantly adding delicious new snacks, and you can choose the snacks you want. They deliver them right to your door, so when you're sitting up at night and you reach into the cabinet and you grab the first thing, it'll be healthy, good for you, and really, really tasty. With with Nature Box, you'll never get bored. New snacks all the time, inspired by real customer feedback. And if you ever try a snack you don't like, Nature Box will replace it for free. Right now, you'll save even more. Nature Box is offering our fans 50% off your first order when you go to naturebox.com slash Clavin. That's naturebox.com slash K-L-A, V as in Victor, A-N, for 50% off your first order. Naturebox.com slash Clavin. Try it. You know, I, I'm telling you, once you try it, you will will be a happy camper. I have to say goodbye to Facebook and YouTube, but come on over to thedailywire.com and subscribe because this is it. It's coming coming to the point on July 10th when we're going to raise our rates. Right now, it's still just a lousy eight bucks a month. After this, you have to pay by the word, and it's Ben Shapiro's word, so it's going to cost you a fortune. Come on over to thedailywire.com.